Shalom. I'd like to give all praise to the Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakak Wadash. Uh, double honors to the apostles, elders, and brethren of Great Millstone, teaching the truth all in the earth. Um, I'd like to also give salutations to the hopefully elect of Israel. Shalom. Um, today, I hope to bring a, a short lesson. Uh, something was on my mind while I was at work today. And um, it was a matter of, uh, uh, of thinking about the grace and mercy that we have um, as the children of the Most High, right? So what hit my mind uh, was the patience and the long suffering that the Lord uh, has for his children um, and as well as what's going to happen to uh, the wicked ones that are in the earth. Um, he's also had long suffering and patience with them as well. But that's what hit my mind today. And what was so funny was this was about, I don't know, 1130 this, this morning while I was at work. And um, I began to think about this while I was driving. And I said, yeah, you know, the Lord's really long suffering with us, man, you know, because if he really wanted to, he could end this thing right now, okay? Um, meaning that if, if, he really, if he really wanted to, to, to bring about the destruction, it could happen just, just as easily as any one of us snapping our fingers, right? And uh, whoever would be saved would be saved. I mean, we, we hope that we're, you know, part of the elect and, 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 and part of that remnant that'll be saved. But ultimately, that's left up to the Most High, right? And uh, I work with a crew of guys, right? And I wanted to, I wanted to film this little short lesson in the car, but I couldn't do it because I was around them, and you know, uh, I don't tell them any of my business. I don't, I don't tell them what my faith is. I don't, I don't tell them how I walk in my, in, in, in my life unless. Now there is one guy, you know, you know. That I work with, that um, I don't know. He, I'm kind of feeling out his spirit that he might be one out of the four others um, that might be able to receive um, what we believe, right? Um, but I'm just letting the spirit dictate how that's going to go. But anyway, along with that, I also saw that uh, on my phone later on this afternoon, <clears throat> I'm in Central Time. So around three o'clock central time, I saw where, I don't know if it was one of the apostles or one of the other brothers, if they posted or reposted something that said something about long suffering that came across my phone. And I was like, man, that is really the spirit that, you know, my mind was already on that. And I said, I'm gonna prepare something as, as quick as I can. And sure enough, it came up over over the, the feed, the YouTube feed on my phone. And I just thought that it just tickled me to death. So anyway, I'm going to get into this thing. Lord willing, it'd be edifying for someone who watches the video um, and go into a little bit of the scriptures and, and try to put together how we uh, understand the long suffering or the patience of the Lord, even when he's dealing with his children. And the patience, uh, I believe, is in Romans, and we'll get to that, Lord willing, uh, where Paul talks about uh, the, the Lord's patience and long suffering, even when it comes to the wicked. Okay, so <clears throat> first things first, um, Salaki. What we're going to do is I'm going to read in the blue letter here uh, what long suffering is uh, in the Strongs, and, and the pronunciation is Arech. Arech, okay, um, in the Hebrew, and it says, if you go into it for yourself, it says long, it says pinions, to the second definition, definition is patience, slow to anger, okay, that's what it says uh, in the Strong's on the blue letter, and then I got a point of, that I'm going to make on the blue letter as well, so I go to my old college dictionary, right, Webster's, Look up long suffering, and it only has one definition in there. 
you know, and it says long and patient endurance of offense. Long and patient endurance of offense. That's what they have for long suffering. Okay. Now, let's go over to uh, one of the very first scriptures. Uh, let's go over to Exodus 34. And we'll read here an account with Moses dealing with the Lord. And the Lord's dealing with Moses talking about the children of Israel. Okay. And it says, uh, Exodus 34 and 1. And the Lord said to Moses, cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. And I will write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets that you broke. So be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present, and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain and no man shall come up with you and let no man be seen throughout all the mountains so like in all the mountain let neither flocks nor herds feed before that mountain verse 4 so he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones then Moses rose early in the morning and went up Mount Sinai as the Lord Yahweh had commanded him and he took in his hand two tablets of stone now the Lord, Yahweh descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord power, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Keepeth mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. That's where we get the reincarnation uh, uh, part from, okay? Um, and the judgment that we received in a past prior life, okay? Um, verse, verse 8. So Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshiped. Then he said, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go among us, even though we are a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us as your inheritance. So Moses pleaded with the Lord for the children of Israel that the Lord would basically spare us and forgive us for our sin. Now, who had sin? The Israelites. Well, who can sin? Those that had the law. Okay? Plain and simple. And we've been through that on various lessons from various uh, apostles and various elders and brothers and various men uh, who teach the same doctrine. They've gone into lessons about that. Okay? About sin and who has the law. Only those with the law can sin. Okay? So then we move forward here to uh, Numbers 14 and let's start at verse 13 and Moses said to the Lord then the Egyptians will hear it for by your might you brought these people up from among them and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land they have heard that you Lord Yahweh are among these people that you Lord are seen face to face and your cloud stands above them and you go before them in a pillar of, of, a, of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you kill these people as one man, then the nations will have heard of your fame, will speak, saying, because the Lord Yahweh was not able to bring this people to the land which he swore to give them, therefore he killed them in the wilderness. And now I pray, let the power of my Lord be great, just as you have spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. But he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquities of the father on the children to the third and fourth generation. Verse 19. Pardon the iniquities of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt, from Egypt even to, until now. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. For truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test, now these ten times I have not heeded my voice. 
they clearly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop right there because it goes into something else. Okay, but we understand the patience that the Lord has with his children, whom Moses already um, told the Lord. We understand that, you know, these are a stiff-necked group of people, you know, as a nation, and have mercy on them. And the Lord has been long-suffering with us over these many, many, many years, right? And it's a blessing to have it, you know, to, to, that he, he shows that mercy to us. So I'm going to go over the Psalms now, uh, Psalms 86, and we'll read even King David. Ask for the mercy, ask for the grace, and ask the Lord to be patient with it, right? So let's read uh, Psalms 86 and 1, okay? It says, uh, prayer, for, prayer of David, bow down your ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am holy. You are my power. Have your, have your servant who trusts in you. Save, Salakia, save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Rejoice the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, for to you, Salaki, for you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you. So like it. O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are power. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart. Yeah. Unite my heart to fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, my God with all my heart, and I will glorify your name forevermore. For great is your mercy towards me, and you have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, the, the proud have risen against me, and a mob of violent men have sought my life, and have not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and grace. Salakia. I'll read that again. This is verse 15, eight, Psalms 86, 15. But you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. O turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your man, of your maid servant. Show me a sign for good that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, O Lord, Yahweh, have helped me and comforted me. Okay, that was Psalm 86, right? So here you see King David is asking for the same mercy and grace. Okay, and the Lord has been long suffering with us. So now we, 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 we established that in the Old Testament. If, they, if you want to call it that, there's really nothing old about it because it's been continuous. But uh, I think those wicked theologians in seminary schools like to make a division, like to say, you know, something is, is, is of the Old Covenant or Old Testament. And then you have the New Testament. Um, it's continuous. Uh, and I think I've stated that once before. You know, um, in, the, in the Old Covenant, um, the New Testament is concealed. In the New Testament, the Old Covenant is revealed. Um, that's quite that's quite simple, because the apostles, um, Yahweh Shai, you know, the Savior, they all quoted the covenants. Okay, there was no New Testament written from for them to go, you know, go to. They their their acts and their actions and the things that they did, the miracles that the Lord performed became what you call the New Testament. But the New Testament wasn't written. So how could it how how could they be teaching something different other than what they learned from their fathers? Right? I mean that's simple. Okay? So now let's go over to Romans. 
Uh, let's go over to Romans 9. And let's look at what Paul has to say here. Okay. Uh, what shall we say then? Romans 9 verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? Certainly not. I'm going to stop right there. Because I don't know if anybody else has noticed. But there are some words that are being changed in the blue letter. Okay, uh, in Romans 9, on this particular verse, when it at, when Paul asks a question, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? It should say, God forbid, but it says, certainly not now. So my suspicion is that they've been in there changing some of the words, okay? Because the scriptures now, even though you have it in, well, let me see, Salakia. Somehow or another, this got on. This got on the New King James version. Let me see. I switched it back to King James version. Let me see if it reads the right way. Nope, it says it. it says it in there. It says certainly not. Now that's a new one on me. I got it on the King James version. Okay, so that tells me that uh, they've been in there messing around with some of some of the words on the blue letter. So you got to kind of be careful of that because, you know, uh, the way that they can change a word or use a word can change the meaning of what's being said. It, it, it can change the application. So you have to be careful with that. So, of course, we know it says, uh, God forbid, okay, when you read it. Let me, because I keep my keep my Bible down here as well. Yeah, verse fourteen, Romans nine, verse fourteen. You know, uh, it says, uh, "What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the most most high? God forbid." And here it says, Cer "Certainly not." So be careful with that. Okay, uh, let's let's move on. Okay, because I, I noticed how it's, it's trying to, it's reading a little bit different, like, like, like a modern time. It's not like an old English style anymore. I've noticed that uh, going into the blue letter. Okay, so uh, let, let's move on. Okay, uh, verse 15. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of the Most High who shows mercy. For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, for this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may show my power in you, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Therefore he has mercy on whom he wills, and whom he wills he hardens. Okay. Verse 19, you will say to me then, why does he still find fault for who has resisted his will? But indeed, O oh man, who are you to reply against the most high? Salakia, let me look at this again because I don't like the way that's reading. Bear with me here because I'm, I'm thinking that yeah, they've gone in and changed it. They've gone in and changed it because Romans 9 and 20, it says, but indeed. Uh, and in, and in the uh, King James Version, it says, nay, but. Okay, but it says here, but indeed. So they've gone in and start trying to update uh, new speak and, and, and new diction in, into the scriptures and this is on because if you look at the top it's on the King KJV version okay where it says uh, advanced options so they've gone in and tried to change some of this so now we're going to have to keep an eye on what they what they're saying and and how you're going to try to apply this okay um, and I'm just what I'm going to do is read it from the scripture because I, I just don't like the way that sounded. I'm going to stop at verse. 
Let me see. Flocking. I'm sorry. I didn't know that this was changed like it is. I'll, I'll go back. I'm going to start all over. Let me go back to 14. I'm going to read it out of the scripture. I don't like the way that sounded. All right, Romans 9, verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? God forbid, or Most High forbid. For, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that showeth mercy. And see, in here it's saying, it doesn't say uh, runneth. Or will it? It says wills, nor of, in verse 16, wills, nor of him who runs. And that's not what it says. It says, willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the most high that showeth mercy. Okay. And, it, and in here it says, shows mercy. So, they're, they're trying to update this and make it sound like it's a modern it's a modern word, okay? So I'll go on. Verse 17, For the scripture saith that Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I raised up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Verse 18, Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, why doeth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against the Most High? Shall the thing formed by say to him that formed it, why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the pot of power over the clay for the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? And that's where you're going to see, well, in the next verse, let me go on. What if the Most High, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with the much long suffering, the vessel of wrath fitted for destruction? So there he's saying, it's saying the same thing. He has long suffering and patience for his nation, his inheritance, and he has long patience for that vessel that is fit, okay, um, for, for that honor of, 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 of or, or dishonor, okay? So the Lord has long suffering for the honor and he has long suffering for the dishonor and the dishonor being those wicked, uh, wicked people, the wicked nations that's fit for that destruction, okay? And he has that same long suffering, okay? And that's, that, that kind of leads into also the same thing that we say that the most high has balance, right? He has balance on, on both sides. OK, but I'm just I'm just kind of miffed at why they went in here and tried to change this the way that they did. If it's the if it's the King James Version, then it should speak as though it was the King James Version and not like the new King James Version or standard King James Version. And they're trying to make it like an NIV. And that's they shouldn't be tampering with it because the way that they're writing it now, they're trying to. They're trying to make it like it's a modern, modern thing here, okay? Um, so let's go on. We know that the Lord is long suffering, right? That's what the lesson is on. So I'm, I'm not going to try to keep going that long. I didn't intend for it to get over 20 minutes, but there you go. You know, um, let's start with. Uh, I'll just start at verse 1 because with that, it kind of threw me off a little bit. All right, let's start at uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1, and uh, we start at 1. Paul, an apostle of Yahweh and Mashiach, by the commandments of our power, our Savior, and the Lord Yahweh and Mashiach, our hope, to Timothy, a true son of the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from our power, our Father, and Yahweh and Mashiach, our Lord, okay? That's what we pray for every single day is grace and mercy and that the Lord be long-suffering with us, 
okay, and, and continue to shed that grace and mercy on us to keep us until that day comes when we can get out of here, okay? As I urge you when I went into Macedonia, re remain in Ephesus that you may, cha may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, right? Nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Now, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some, having strayed, have turned aside to idle talk, right? And that seems to be a pattern even to this day, you know, uh, that we're, we're having idle talk in our own nation, dealing with our own people, right? Idle talk, stuff that doesn't mean anything. All right, stuff that's not scriptural based, right? Okay, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, okay? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kid kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the gracious gospel of the blessed power which was committed to my trust. And I think I really think they tampered with this way, way too much. And I think Yahweh Shai, Salakia, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, although I was formerly a blasphemer and a prosecutor and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Hamashiach Yahawashai. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Hamashiach Yahawashai came into the world to save sinners. Now, who are the sinners? The lawbreakers, okay? And how can you be a sinner? By breaking the law, okay? Of whom I am chief, verse 16. However, for this reason I obtained mercy that in me first... Yahweh Shai Hamashiach might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Okay? That's what we're looking for. That mercy so that we can obtain everlasting life. That long suffering, you know, because some of us are just pure knuckleheads. It's taken us a long time to get to understand it, right? Um Verse 17, 1 Timothy 1, verse 17. Now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, to our power, who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay. And let's go. Let's see if we get one more. Almost 30 minutes. I didn't intend this. So lock it. And uh, let's look at uh, 2 Peter and we'll start uh, 2 Peter 3, and we'll start at verse 1. Beloved, I, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that ye may be mindful of the words which are spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts. And you got that shit now, man. I mean, there's so many bugged out scoffers everywhere you go. You know, if you visit the elders or the apostles' pages, man, it's, these people are popping up all over the place. You know, and when, you, when, when you're on the comment boards of the, of, of, of the apostles and the elders, you know, we have to do our best not to pay no attention to them and, and let um, let those moderators that they have selected for their page, let them go ahead and do their job. Let them let them do their work, okay? Um, I try not to, to, to get involved with, with um, going, you know, 
being too active on the, on the comment board. Sometimes the spirit is flowing real good, you know, and you can call up some scriptures. But most of the time, as I've said before, I, I like to just listen and, you know, and, and read the scriptures as they're coming up, as the brothers are posting them. I try not to get, you know, get overzealous with posting myself, you know. But sometimes the spirit does get heavy on you and you start you start posting, you know, the, the spirit is working with you and the scriptures keep popping up on you. And, you know, you'd like to share them for edification, right? Uh, but we're not on the comment boards to, you know, to hold a conversation. You know, hey, what you wearing tonight? You know, no, no shit like that. We ain't got time for that, right? Um, so uh, let's get back over here, okay? Um, verse, uh, uh, verse three. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they willfully forget that by the word of the Most High, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of the judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. For Verse 9. For the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward who? Us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay? I'm going to stop right there. Um, and we, we take note of that um, in the second sentence. Okay, while well, I read it over, uh, Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but is long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance okay so he's giving you that time and the point I wanted to make lastly was I don't know if you paid, paid any attention to um, how many are these so-called famous fucking people have died this week. Go, go back and look. Go back and look how many so-called actors, directors, um, uh, athletes, uh, uh, whatever they are in the world with the world's glory, uh, how many of them the Lord took off the earth. Just like that. I mean, just that it was popping off over the weekend like crazy. Go back and take a look at that. You know, the Lord is, 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 is really moving. And he's, he's getting these people off the planet real quick, okay? Um, I think pretty much that's going to do it. Let me look at my time here. I'm on 33 minutes, okay? And I didn't mean for it to go that long. Uh, so, again, you know, uh, the Lord is long-suffering, um, and he is uh, willing to uh, give us a chance in grace and mercy. Um, using his grace and mercy, he's, he's, he's pouring out his grace and mercy on his children. Um, so stay diligent in the faith. Keep reading, keep praying, keep studying, keep fasting. Uh, follow the law as, as much as you can, as, 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 as much as convenient for you, okay? Uh, we know that the law doesn't save us. However, we're supposed to rehearse these righteous acts, uh, even though we're still in captivity, right? So we want to keep that in mind, okay? And uh, with that, I'm going to end the lesson. I'm going to say, uh, call hello, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakar Kadesh. Peace to the hope of the elect of Israel. And I'll see you on the next lesson. Shalom.